The road trip is a classic American tradition, full of new sights, sounds, and quick bathroom stops. On this road trip, we headed south, way south, because we heard we could find some good skiing. So naturally, off we went. Destination, Ecuador. Translated, Ecuador means equal, because the country sits on both sides of the equator between Bolivia and Peru. This is Quito, the capital. Ecuador is the smallest country in South America. At just over a thousand square miles, it's roughly the size of Arizona. And the Ecuadorian people are what make it such a great place. Skiers Danny Caruso, Dan Gilchrist, Chris Anthony, and director Chris Patterson make up our team. So here we are in first class seating on the train, and this is the Ecuadorian sleeper car. On this deluxe train, the guys opted for a viewing car as they began their journey into the center of the country. The train slowly rock and rolled through farmlands where the average income is about $35 a month. First stop is the village of Latacanga. Check this out, dude. It says volcanic eruption. Look at that. It shows that it, it's going to rip down and hit the city if there's a volcanic eruption, which is something we should try to think about. And the queen of those fiery mountains is Cotopaxi. Then they got to ride on a bus that made a scheduled once a week trip that left three days late. Our guide was Juan Gabriel, who got tired of the big city life in Quito and moved to Cotopaxi. According to the indigenous people, all of these mountains have spirits. Um, actually, Cotopaxi is considered a female mountain. And uh, the, all the times that I've climbed, you, you do have this feeling of warmth and nourishing. Yeah, yeah. Is this the first time the skis and board have gone time up on a meal? The first time the skis are on this area, yes. Yeah, I oh, think yeah. we should do this more first, often. First yeah. Time. <laughs> and with no more highway left, the steep climbing began. The timber line here in Ecuador is about 8,000 feet, which means it's easy to find a spot for the tent, but privacy is a little harder to come by. After sharing some tips with the locals and a quick call home, it's time to rest up. The goal of day number two is to hike to 16,000 feet. During the climb, the fog and steam was so thick you could hardly ever see Cotopaxi, and then the equatorial summer slowly began to give way to the more familiar conditions of winter. Suddenly, skis and snowboards didn't seem so out of place. Our intrepid group pitched camp at 16,000 feet on top of a layer of clouds, which ended up being a far cry from the jagged volcanic rocks they actually had to sleep on. Did I mention the wind? Even for these athletes, hiking above 16,000 feet isn't easy, and the lack of oxygen combined with heavy loads leaves lots of time to take in the views. Cotopaxi's crater is at 18,900 feet, while the summit is another 100 feet higher. Up top, the only other thing sticking out of the clouds is the neighboring volcano, Chimborazo. With our lungs burning and our feet itching, it was now time to start down. And with three free riders and 10 million square miles, two of them have to run into each other. Equatorial humidity, high winds, rainstorms as high as 19,000 feet, 
make the snow resemble vertical cauliflower mixed with blue ice. But when you've hiked your gear up a 19,000 foot volcano, it's hard to complain too much when you've got a free ride down. There's no code epoxy ski patrol up here either. And if you fall, you could slide all the way down the volcano where a mule and a long bus ride are your only shot at a hospital. But this is a chance you take when you go skiing on a volcano in Ecuador in the middle of July. actually wasn't the greatest in the world up there on the hard snow but this mountain was talking to us and it wasn't going to make life easy for us but at the same time it wasn't going to let us completely fail when i walk away from this whole journey it won't be with the skiing i don't think it'll be with uh, the actual travels that i undertook we were riding back on the train coming back from cotopaxi to quito and a uh, train broke down about 100 Things of billowing smoke just blew into our face, about knocked us out. And uh, here we are stuck out in the middle of who knows where, pretty much nowhere. I don't know if we're gonna have to walk back to Quito or not, but I think Cotopaxi is still after us. She's not gonna let us get away with this. So it looks like uh, she wins again.